everyone merry christmas and a happy new year i know christmas is already over by the time this video is uploaded but it's not over in my head and we still have some housekeeping to do before we conclude the year which means that we are on to the last what's new video of 2024 so let's see what santa had in store for december all right so first up we have more superbase releases we now support like filter and all functionality in superbase queries so when working with superbase queries such as backend queries or the query rows action you now have the ability to filter data using the like filters which utilizes postgresql's like functionality under the hood this means you can use wildcard characters like percent and underscore to perform pattern matching and filter your data effectively let's walk through an example suppose you're building an e-commerce project with a search page where users can search for products in the database using a search keyword they enter here's how you can implement it set the filter to the name property of the product object as the goal is to match product names with the entered keyword you can either select like or like case insensitive if you want the search to be case insensitive which is useful when the keyword may have varying capitalization now use wildcard characters to make the search more flexible for example person value person would match any product name that contains the search keyword anywhere within the string value percent matches any product name that starts with the search keyword person value will match any product name that ends with the search keyword underscore matches exactly one character for example p underscore t would match both pat and pet so for example if the user enters shoe as the search keyword setting the filter to person shoe person this will return all products with shoe anywhere in the name such as running shoes shoe rack or shoelaces additionally you can also add another filter suppose you want to also check descriptions against the search keyword so you can get more products based on the name or the descriptions in this case now you have two filters and you can now set it to and or or functionality which is now supported in flutterflow and here's also a tip when working with search features like this one make sure to run the query logic on on change action trigger and add a delay action before your database call so your database is not queried on every keystroke next up santa says we now support the on data change action trigger so if you're working with superbase streaming queries for example if you have a backend query for a superbase query and your single time query is set to off you can now perform actions on the on data change action trigger of that widget that calls the query for instance in my cart page if any new items or current items are updated i will use the on data change action trigger to display a snack bar notification to inform the user that there is an update all right next we have more superbase updates when using the send reset password email action you now have the option to set a custom redirect url so now you can specify the exact page where users will be redirected to after clicking the magic link in the reset password email okay so that's all for superbase so next up let's see what we have in store all right so next up we have a new card and we have more updates for development environments first you can now specify different package names for different environments package names are useful for uniquely identifying your app across platforms mostly for publishing or testing this helps prevent build conflicts simplifies environment specific testing and enables scenarios such as publishing an unlisted app to the ios app store for beta user testing you can also now customize your deployment settings for both mobile and web based on your development environment this means you can now configure different settings on the deployment page such as maintaining separate app versions or build numbers or different app store or play store settings for mobile deployments 
and for web you can deploy to different subdomains based on the environment such as beta dash e-commerce app dot dot app to differentiate between staging beta and production sites all right so that is done is done okay next up we have another card so let's see what we have all right so now we have support for on dispose action trigger which will be available at page level or component level action flow so the on dispose action trigger runs when a component or a page is navigated away or removed from memory making it useful for stopping ongoing operations for example in an e-commerce app you might have a promotional countdown timer that starts ticking when the page loads, suppose via on initialization. When the user leaves the page, the on dispose trigger can stop the timer to save resources and prevent unnecessary background activity, which improves app performance. All right, Santa, those were really interesting big releases. Is there any small releases that we should be talking about? All right. We do have another card. So, first up, we now support libraries in Marketplace. So now you can submit your library projects to Flutterflow Marketplace, which allows you to share reusable resources such as components, API calls, custom code, data types, action blocks, and more such across Flutterflow projects with full version control. So now you can also monetize your libraries through Marketplace. So go ahead, create integrations with other API-driven tools, wrappers for packages on pub.dev or UI kits. What are you waiting for? Go and submit that library that you have been building for all this time. Next, we now support controlling the swipe direction for swipeable stacks, which allows you to build cool Tinder swipe-like interactions. The swipe directions available are up, down, left, right, vertical, and horizontal. All right, so next, when deploying private APIs in Flutterflow, Cloud functions are deployed to your connected Firebase project, which is not new, but now you can configure the minimum and maximum number of instances used for these cloud functions, giving you more control over performance and cost. A minimum of one, which is the default, ensures faster server responses, while setting it to zero can save costs. The maximum controls how many instances can scale up, keeping performance stable and costs predictable. We also have some changes to permission notifications. Previously, Flutterflow would prompt users to request permission for push notifications as soon as they were authenticated into the app, which is not always ideal and a bit annoying as a user if you ask me. But now we have added a new setting in the push notification settings page so you can decide when the permission request dialog appears. If this setting is turned off, you can manually trigger the request permission action wherever it's needed. Or you can rely on automatic permission pop-ups that appear before a service requiring user permissions, such as accessing the camera or gallery, is used. And lastly, you can now accept all changes from either branch when resolving merge conflicts. This makes it faster and easier to resolve conflicts if, for example, you want to take all the changes from the main branch. And that's a wrap. I am Pooja Bhomik signing off with the What's New updates for 2024. Flutterflow has grown a lot this year with big updates and changes to our plans. We hope you have enjoyed these improvements as much as we have enjoyed bringing them to you. As we move into 2025, I'm excited to see how Flutterflow continues to grow. Your feedback means a lot to us, so please share your thoughts in the comments below. And thank you for being part of this journey. See you in 2025. Happy New Year!